that right there is a portrait of my old dog Grizzly. He unfortunately was killed in 2020 and if there's anything that that experience taught me, it's that the community surrounding the person who's going through that level of grief has a massive impact on how fast and how well someone can recover. See, I had literally tens of thousands of people reach out to me after that and I was in a lucky position because of my YouTube channel. The amazing people who reached out to me sent me things like this. This is a felt statue of Grizzly. And if you know anything about felting, you'll know just how difficult something like this is to make. One gentleman even created this clay sculpture based off a photo he saw on my prospecting page. So far as a scale diorama with not only me, but Grizzly in a train carriage. Pioneer Paulie's sister sent me this portrait and it sits very proudly in my office. These small, generous and extremely kind acts helped me pull through some of the hardest parts because I had something quite tangible from the letters of people showing appreciation to the sculptures that I'm able to view every single day in my house to hold on to when it all got a bit too much. Today I'm going to be doing a wood burning portrait of a dog that has recently passed away for a family that doesn't know that I'm doing it. This is in no way shape or form a tutorial on wood burning, I just wanted to show you the process that I go through. The first thing I do is I get a picture of what I'm going to do as a wood burning and I import that into Photoshop because we need to make a stencil. I prefer to work in A4 size for these because it allows you to get enough detail in the picture. Then we bring in the dog's portrait. Then I want to isolate the dog and we do that by using object selection. This is the fastest way to get Photoshop to automatically pick out the dog on its own and get rid of everything else. For full disclosure, I have actually already done all of these steps and I've got the stencil on the piece of wood, but I want to show you guys so you understand what I'm doing. Then we're just going to delete the background. Now that we've got the subject isolated, we're going to actually go through the process of turning this to black and white because when we burn it, this is going to be black and white and therefore we don't want to print in color. I have a convenient button right here that turns things to um, black and white. The biggest thing when creating a stencil like this is to make sure that your highlights, the whitest areas, and your shadows, the darkest areas, are well separated. So you can see there's like a white fringe just around the neckline there. And we've also got some very dark nostril holes and we've got a lot of darkness up in the eyes. So we want to make sure that they stand out from each other. So we're just going to increase the contrast a little bit. And you can see for a photo, this would look terrible, but for now it's separated everything out really nicely. If you want an easy stencil, you put it on sticker paper. So this is inkjet printable adhesive paper. So it means on one side, you've got a regular sheet of paper that's got a sticky backing, so you can stick it to things. But what we're interested in is the other side. This is the smooth laminated side that you get on the back of the sticker. This stencil has been used over 30 times and you can see here how the ink just basically sits on it. And what you do is you put that on your piece of wood and smooth it out. And that transfers the ink, so it looks like that. Now you can do that for any kind of medium, steel, plastic, wood, whatever it might be. And this is what we're gonna use as a guide to burn in this piece of art. To burn it in, this is nothing more than a soldering iron and you can buy the tips for wood burning that will fit into your soldering iron from your local hardware store. You just gotta make sure that you wipe off the excess ink uh, before you do your next stencil because otherwise you'll get transfer you don't want. Let me make this abundantly clear. I am not a professional artist in any way, shape or form and there are a lot of people who are a lot better than I am at doing this. I just have to recognize that every now and again a portrait enters what I call the ugly duckling phase. Where things aren't really finished and they kind of look a little bit funky. It's interesting how it changes once you get more detail in. The ugly duckling phase is where you've got some of the details, but not all of them. And you just think, what the hell am I doing? Mouths on dogs seem to be the hardest thing to do. I don't know what it is about their mouths. It's really difficult. All right, I am definitely past the ultra ugly duckling stage. It's this part that's gonna give me some curry because in the original photo, this is very light fur and it's recessed. To get the separation of the jaw is gonna be tricky. And I got this opposite problem over here. This is extremely dark. And if I go that dark with the burn, it's probably gonna blend into the face. Oh, the conundrums, the conundrums. Especially when you've only got one tool, you can you can make it lighter or darker, and once it goes darker, you can't make it lighter again. <laughs> the fun of working with heat. We're almost there. I just got a little bit in the body to put in, but I'm gonna add the highlights in the eyes because that's what makes these pop. They're white pencil.
Well, there it is. I'm a little bit out of practice, that's for damn sure. I think it's one of those cases of um, use it or lose it. I haven't done one in probably over a month and it, I'm a little rusty. But hey, it's a fun little project that I get to do, but more importantly, hopefully I'll be able to give this family something that they can look up to every now and again and draw a little bit of comfort from it. Because at the end of the day, you have to be the change you want to see in the world. And by doing something like this, hopefully I can bring this family a little bit of comfort.